For this brief tutorial, I want to walk you through how to create an Excel chart um, to help guide you through the assignment that is due this upcoming Sunday. And if we need more help or developing our Excel skills throughout the term, I invite you to reach out to myself or Noah, our teaching assistant, to get an idea of what needs you have. But for the following assignment, you are asked to select a certain part of the data that you have been given and create a chart. Right now what I will do is walk you through how to create a chart using a data variable like the one that we are looking at. So here I created a very random set of dummy data using animal categories and the number of those animals at the zoo. To create a basic chart, usually what you can do is select by highlighting beginning with the label of the column and then this is Excel 2007 on a very old PC and selecting insert. Here you have different types of charts that you can, ins you can insert into the file and so let's just randomly begin with column. I'm going to just select the very simplest of columns Excel automatically knows for this to create a column for each animal and rise the column to the number next to it. At the same time, I could also have highlighted the data, insert, created a line chart. Now, as you can see, Excel has represented the data in a different form, where it connects each dot of the number of monkeys to lions and it moves the data through a line. In addition, I can again highlight this data, create a pie chart. Here what you see is that each animal is a slice within the entire pie. Now I haven't given you exactly which chart to choose because part of the assignment is that you need to understand the type of chart for the type of data. So what I will do right now is walk you through how to format modestly each of these kinds of charts, but it is your task in the assignment to select the appropriate chart. When you're looking at something like a pie chart, my preferred visual of it is that you select the design that provides this, the percentage and the name of the category within each. As you can tell, this is a little bit crowded, so it's good to usually go in there and increase the size, do a little formatting to try to get to how you want it to actually appear. Sometimes you have to just increase the size of the entire pie chart and here you have a slightly better appreciation for what it's supposed to show. In something like this instance, what I would do myself is highlight the data and I would go to the data tab and I would select sort. What I would do is sort on the total so that it brings together the largest to smallest, smallest to largest and here I want to do largest to smallest values and it reorganizes the data so that you can see the largest slices are grouped and then it moves into the smaller slices. To this chart you should enter the source of the data and what you, how you can do that is by selecting insert text box and call it data source Heidi's mind. These again are pieces that can always be formatted. I can italicize this. I can change the color of the text to blue, let's say. The title I want to change, so I can double click in here. Again, I'm working on a PC, Max behave differently, but I can call it animals, animals at the zoo. These are the different pieces of creating charts that you should get used to working with.
Now for the assignment you're also asked to take the chart and put it into a Word document. In this case what I would do is click on the chart and you can see that there's this little border with dots that gets created. You can with your keyboard simply do control C or if you're on an Apple you would do command C or you can right click on this chart and select copy. But when you do right clicking you want to be careful that you don't just right click on this part for instance. You want to select the entire chart so right click copy. Then I will open up Word And in this document, you can simply control V, paste, which automatically pastes the piece as an Excel object, which means that you can somewhat still format contents within it. You could also go to paste and under paste special, select the way that you want it to be inserted. When you're working between two Microsoft pieces, it's actually somewhat beneficial for you to paste it as an, a chart object. You can also paste link so long as your files are saved in a way that you can link to each other. That's a little bit more advanced, so here we would want to put, paste it as an Excel chart object, which sometimes, depending on the type of object, it might allow you to double click and edit the source data. However, keeping it simple, here we would just simply paste as an object and in order to f format this to make it easier to work with, you would want to click on this, right click on this and do format object and in layout you would want to select whether you want the text around it to be tight so it can be built into your text, um, whether you want it to be aligned to the left, to the center, or to the right. And these are general formatting pieces that you can do once you are in Word. Returning to Excel, let's put away our pie chart and look at the line chart. When you're working with a line chart, you usually get a legend which you can select to keep or not. In this case we have only one series of data so we really don't need that legend. I simply click my delete button on the board. However, if you have multiple series of data you would want a legend. Right now we have a simple one line. We want to have the title and again we want to label the data source. So you would go to insert text box highlight a space where you want to insert this data source Heidi's mind and format the text as you need as you need to this obviously is too big so we might want to decrease the font size move around the borders of the text box and usually you should include your data source at the bottom of the chart that you create and in this case you can see that it's blocking my data source so I click the chart in such a way that I see this little box created around that box tells me that I can work with it basically I can increase it by pulling it up the, in this case it goes over the title and it's not too horrible because the title is a line and it can rest on a line in the chart um, you can also format the text here. So let's say we don't want it to be in a diag in a angle. You could format the text angle here. It's not really a problem for me, but the size is a little bit. So I want to shrink the size so that I can see it better. You can also add axis labels to this by going to the layout tab and selecting axis titles. Of course you have your horizontal axis which would be your X axis and this in this case it would be animals. 
So you insert the axes and you start typing animals. Then you have your axis title for vertical, which is your y-axis. And let's say you want to create that title. You can start typing count, for instance. Here you see how the axis is actually overlapping the title. So if you, again, select for that little box and pull it towards the right, you can see now the title, the li axis label. Again, I want to put this into Word, so I'm going to click on it until I see in this border created. Usually this requires that you click on the white area of the chart. Right click, copy. Go back to Word and on a new page, I'm going to Control V, paste it, or as we said before, Paste Special Microsoft Excel Chart Object. The title's a little wonky, but you get the idea of what you would do here. Again, you want to format the area if you want to have it be part of your text, somewhat look like the way you'd see a chart in a newspaper article. Um, okay, now returning to Excel, and we're going to get rid of the line chart. We're going to look at the column chart. Column charts are similar to bar charts. The difference between column and bar charts is the direction of these bars. So with a column chart, your bars are going up and down. With a bar chart, if you were to change it, which you can simply change one type of chart by right-clicking and selecting Change Chart Type, and then scrolling down the different options or easily clicking over here. Okay, so you see this is basically just a directional thing. Um, aesthetically, it can be a decision that you want to have it look like this, or you might, for certain types of data, it's actually important to have it one way or another. Again, if you review the Canadian Statistics website on charts and graphs, you can see more specifically when a certain type of data, such as nominal, categorical, ordinal, or inter interval ratio, requires that you use specific types of charts. For instance, with a pie chart, you're not going to simply apply it to every kind of data that you get. So review that part of our module to get an idea of what belongs where. We're going to play here with the data, and I actually kind of like the way that it looks like a, in the bar, so that you see how this there's almost a slope. When you're working with something like animals, you're actually not counting slopes, right? But anyway, so here, again, I want you to label the data source, add a text down here, copy this piece, put it into Word, change the title of the chart as necessary. If you need to, make sure that you label units. So this might be anim count total count of animals at the zoo. Working with a different kind of data, you might say count of students per classroom and so forth. And as we progress with different data types throughout the term, we can definitely talk about how we want to change the type of labels we're using and always reference our units of measurement. So here, I hope this basic tutorial helps walk you through how to create a chart. It's a little bit longer than some of the other tutorials you've encountered, but I wanted to kind of cater it to our assignment. The reason that I did not select one specific chart is because part of your task in the assignment is to select the appropriate chart and explain why that chart is appropriate when you are referencing the type of variable. So feel free to email me if you need to before the assignment's due date on Sunday and best of luck completing the assignment.